to the SEC on ESPN. No rain on Rocky Top today. We've got game three of the series in this top 25 battle. Georgia in Knoxville, but the Lady Vols looking for the sweep of the Bulldogs today. Everybody jockeying for position in the SEC standings. Tennessee, the first time they're above 500 at eight and six in conference play. Georgia, meanwhile, six and 11 in SEC action. Hey, we're excited to be with you today. Courtney Lyle alongside three-time All-American and national champion Kayla Bro, And this is the pitching matchup you want to see. Saw it in game one, but we have two aces in the circle on this Sunday. This is what Sunday in the SEC is all about. It's having your best pitcher go to the circle and try and give you an opportunity to win the game. And for Georgia, it's going to be Mary Wilson Avant. She's got a ton of great stuff. She's a fifth-year senior that's really led this team as the true ace. And she's coming off of her biggest win of her career, maybe, by beating Oklahoma on Tuesday of last week. And then on the other side of things, Tennessee has Ashley Rogers, who, no big deal, but leads the SEC with 216 strikeouts. She has filthy moves. She's one of the best pitchers in the entire country. She got the win in game one, and she's going to have a chance to do it here in game three. The best, Kayla, she is on that USA Softball Player of the Year top 25 list that just came out this week. Ashley Rogers' name is there. She gets the start, and she will face Savannah Sykes first at the top of this Georgia order. Ashley Rogers, like we said, she's just one of the most talented pitchers in the entire country. But what makes her so good is she's got incredible spin and movement. She has this incredible rise ball that she can throw on three different planes. And she's a healthy veteran in the circle after battling injury her entire career. And she's been able to really master other pitches to support that rise ball that's gotten her the success that she's deserved. takes that one, but Ivy Davis is there for the scoop. One away here, Sykes is already retired. We'll see Sydney Kuma and Jaden Kearney coming up next. But Kayla, you mentioned it. We saw Callie Turner in the circle yesterday for Tennessee. How is it going to be for these hitters to adjust back to Ashley Rogers? What's the difference? Well, they couldn't be more different. First of all, Callie Turner comes from the left side, so she's a really good lefty with a ton of off speed, definitely not as high as velocity of Ashley Rogers. She's got more of a floaty style of pitching. Has that late break, but Ashley Rogers is a pure strikeout pitcher. Gonna bring a little bit higher velocity. She's gonna really go to that rise ball, which Callie Turner doesn't throw as often. She's got a nice curveball. She'll throw a, an off speed or change up every once in a while. But I mean, she is just so tough. She is a swing and miss, pure strikeout pitcher. And Sydney Kuma will take a seat right on cue. There's the first strikeout for Ashley Rogers this afternoon. And that's that curveball that really offsets the rise. Just cutting across, across the zone enough to freeze up Kuma. And you can see it just framed perfectly on the outside corner for three. First two batters retired. Jada Kearney steps in, had a home run yesterday to put Georgia on the board first in game two. grab from Kaylin Hannon. Hey, that was a quick top of the first inning. This Tennessee defense and pitching working hard. How about those bats? We'll see them when you come back. If you blinked, you missed the top of the first. We are in the bottom of the first inning. No score here between Georgia and Tennessee. But if Georgia wants somebody in the circle to keep them from being swept this weekend, it's Mary Wilson Avant. Yeah, she is the workhorse for this team, without a doubt. She has thrown 144 innings on this year. She carries the load, and she is that good in the circle. She has so much confidence this season. She's able to throw it to all quadrants. She's got a variety of pitches. She can throw a curve, screw, rise, drop. She can mix speeds. She has a beautiful changeup that she'll throw in pretty consistently throughout the game to try and keep this Tennessee team off balance. 
probably picked up the biggest win of her career earlier this weekend as Georgia ended number one Oklahoma's winning streak. It was Mary Wilson Avant in the circle. So now the Lady Vols will have to adjust to her. It'll be Madison Weber leading off for the first time in her career. We'll see Weber, Hannon, and Morgan at the top of this Tennessee order. Yeah, I like that Karen and Ralph Weekly are trying to mix up the lineup to make something happen. They're going with the hot hitters. That's something that we've seen from them all year when they're crafting the lineup, is if somebody has the hot bat, in this case Madison Weber does, you move her up and you reward that player. She is three for six in this series. Had a two RBI double yesterday to help Tennessee get that nine to three win. one of those Tennessee natives on this Lady Vol roster. They have nine players from the state of Tennessee. She's from Sevierville, about 40 minutes away from Knoxville. Rolls it to Kuma, one away. And here comes Kaylin Hannon, another one of those Tennessee natives who has been so big for Tennessee this season, hitting 297 on the year. And that hit her in the elbow. Free pass for Hannon. And this is a nice break for Hannon. An easy hit by pitch right here. You can see Avant just throws one way too up and in. That clips the guard on Hannon's front right elbow. That's the second time she's been hit by a pitch this series. And, and, and when you're maybe not getting on with hits, you'll take the free passes all day any way you can. Especially, Kayla, with Ashley Morgan coming up at the plate. She liked the first pitch. Sends it to shallow left, and Sydney Chambly is there. Crisis averted because Ashley Morgan has been seeing the ball so well for Tennessee as of late. Yeah, she's one of the hottest hitters in this lineup. No doubt she moved into the three-hole spot. But that was a problem for Mary Wilson Avant in game one, and, and really the difference maker was giving up four walks to this Lady Ball team, and Tennessee just came up with a big hit after giving up the free passes. Well, Georgia has given up some free passes this season. Their opponents now have 97 free passes on the year. That would be hit by a pitch and balls combined. Georgia only has 48. Shipman's been holding a big bat as of late, too. Two for four yesterday in game two with that home run. And really, Allie Shipman has looked like a different player, especially coming off of the COVID break that she had. She wasn't allowed to play for about 10 days, like most of the team had had to sit down an extra day. But the last 10 games, she's been so hot. A couple home runs, she's batting 452. Runner goes, and Kaylin Hannon has a stolen base. Tennessee will do that a lot. That is their 83rd steal of the season, her 11th. And I love this call by Tennessee. You know, you look at Peyton Bordeaux, who's a freshman behind the plate. She's only throwing out 15% of runners on the season. So take your chances. The odds are in your favor if you're Tennessee. You're the best team in terms of stolen bases in the entire SEC, so might as well run. And to your point too, Kayla, Peyton Bordeaux is also a freshman. She has had to step up big time to fill the shoes of Jessica Morgan, who is out for the season with an injury. And so she has been thrown in to this, has handled it pretty well for Georgia, but youth behind the plate. There's some room for Shipman, runner coming home. Tennessee is on the board, and Allie Shipman feeling pretty good at second. And that's why you steal that base right there. Pick up an easy RBI for Allie Shipman, 
who gets on plane with this elevated, looks like a drop ball, just doesn't land where Avant wants it to. It's too far up in the zone. Ali Shipman gets on plane and just pops this to the opposite field gap. Picks up a huge two out RBI to start this game off of the balls. Her seventh double of the season will put Tennessee in front and bring us to Chelsea Seger. And, you know, Allie Shipman's had way better at bats the last few weeks. Again, the break might have helped her. She looks more confident, more consistent at the plate. It's the hitter that we've seen in her career showing up late in this season. Dead ball, ball. Dead ball, ball. It's right here. Dead ball, ball. She's staying here. I think Seger might have thought it hit her. And now Karen Weekly comes out to talk to Philip Friels, who is our home plate umpire. That one definitely hit her. So that is two free passes now that Mary Wilson Avant has issued here in the first inning. One of those has already come around to score. Yeah, Avant just not having that same control. This is a, a curveball that she's trying to throw that just really gets way up and away from her. Doesn't have that tight spin, that tight location that we're used to seeing out of Avant. And I think it's a good opportunity for the pitching coach, Rachel Fico, to come out and really talk to her because she's gotten off to a slow slide, slow start. So how do you gain your composure back and get really the amount of spin and precision on your pitches that you need to? The good news is, is that she is so experienced. A veteran in this group has been in tough situations over her career. And I mean, you and I have seen her bounce back in games two already this season. Yeah, nothing phases her. And we talked to Coach Baldwin, the assistant coach for Georgia, and he said that she's the most mature, most confident, most comfortable with herself in the circle. And all those things are really good signs for a pitcher, especially when they struggle because they can dig themselves out of the hole pretty quickly. Ivy Davis to Armistead. And two runners will stay on. How about Allie Shipman though? Allie Shipman getting the job done with two outs, coming up with an RBI to put Tennessee on the board. Tuesday was a huge night for this Georgia softball team facing the number one team in the nation. Jaden Fields hit a home run, but then missed home plate. They would count it as a triple, but guess what? Sometimes sports are just great. You get some redemption in extra innings. The walk-off RBI single off of the bat of Jaden Fields and Oklahoma's win streak comes to an end. What a Tuesday it was. Georgia took that first game. They split the doubleheader. OU would rebound with a run roll in game two. But that is a huge moment for this Georgia softball team. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And it really felt like postseason softball. When you're watching that game on Tuesday night, you're like, oh, man, this is why I watch and love this sport. It's for the chance for the upset. It's rooting for the underdog. And for Georgia, I mean, they gave hope to the entire country that Oklahoma, who looked unbeatable at the time, say, hey, here's a little bit of a recipe for trying to upset the Sooners. And they did it. Oklahoma back to its winning ways though this weekend. They run rolled Texas Tech 15 to nothing yesterday and then they beat him again yesterday 5 nothing. So Oklahoma's still a team to watch out for, but if that doesn't give Georgia confidence, I don't know what does. And that's the type of Georgia team that we've seen all year. They're just so gritty and resilient. You can never count them out of a ball game because we've seen them. They were down in the Oklahoma game. They were down seven when they played Kentucky last night, or excuse me, a couple weekends ago. And they find a way to come back and fight. They just are not out of a ball game. And they have a potent enough of an offense to stay in ball games that you might think early they're going to lose. That's why this Georgia team, when you come to the postseason, it is going to be dangerous. Nobody's going to want to play Georgia because of that mentality they can bring against anybody. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think the inconsistency of this Georgia team comes because they're so young. It's a very youthful team. But when you look at this team, I circle somebody like a Lacey Fincher 
that's a senior that's at the plate right now that has the opportunity to lead this team with her experience. Fincher to left, scooped by Hannah. Fincher actually only a junior, but it feels <laughs> like she's got a ton of experience comparatively to the rest of the members on this team. Well, and she's one of their leaders, her along with Savannah Sykes. I mean, they bring that positive and competitive mindset every day, practice, games, whatever it is. Tony Baldwin, the associate head coach, was super pleased with what they've been able to do and bring in the dugout for this team. Yeah, they're the mental and physical leaders. They lead by example first, so they make sure that they take care of themselves. They do all the things that they need to do to be successful, and that rubs off on the younger players. You learn the demeanor it takes, the mentality it takes to be successful in this league, and they show that. And so you give so much confidence to hitters like Sarah Mosley, who are young, that are just getting their start here and experiencing a full season for the first time. Sarah Mosley, we were talking about that UK comeback. Sarah Mosley was a big part of that. She hit the three-run homer to beat Kentucky after Kentucky had the winning run at third base in the fifth inning, and Georgia said, uh-uh, went on, came back from seven runs down. Her three-run homer put them ahead. You know, and the best part about that series for Georgia was not only did they come back from seven runs in the sixth inning, they won game three. They won the series against Kentucky. So they used that momentum from game two. They carried that over and had a huge series victory against a top 15 ranked opponent. Mosley patient and will take her base. First free pass issued by Ashley Rogers today. This is something we'll see from Ashley Rogers. Despite the fact that she's going to only walk one batter for every seven strikeouts she has, she's going to give up some free passes and have a higher pitch count than you might see from her partner Callie Turner in the circle just because she has so much movement. She really wants batters to chase and swing and miss. That's the first walk she has issued in this Georgia series. Didn't walk anybody on Friday. You know, we talked to Karen Weekly about Ashley Rogers' success, and something that stood out to me was that you know when she's doing well, the spin rate of her balls are extremely high. I mean, you can see from her numbers, 216 strikeouts, first in the SEC, 20 wins. She's pitched a ton of innings. But she is a competitor. She's fiery in the circle. She wants the ball. She's healthy. And she talks to Coach Weekly all the time. Hey, who are we going to play? I want to play the best on the schedule. I want this team. I want to go after the best hitters in the country and prove I'm better. And if there's and a team where playing. she doesn't get the job done too, Kayla, she's circled that team as, you know, when are we facing them again? <laughs> That's right. That's right. No, she's somebody you would absolutely want to play behind. Count runs even to Sydney Chambly. Mosley on first. This will be the seventh pitch to Chambly. Chambly went two for three yesterday. And this is where George is going to really have to be disciplined against Ashley Rogers. These deep pitch counts are a huge factor in their success moving forward. How can we get her to throw and how can we see as many pitches as she has in her arsenal? Second time they've seen her this weekend, struggled to score runs in game one. But battling, having long at bats, making Ashley Rogers labor in the circle is going to be one of the keys to their success moving forward in this game. Well, 
Rodgers threw 101 pitches in that first outing against Georgia on Friday. Kalen Hannon getting a lot of action in left field. Two down. And it'll be interesting to see how Georgia approaches Ashley Rogers today because, you know, what we've heard from the, these teams that have played Rogers so far this season is that her spin and the way her rise ball and her curveball look are so similar out of the hand, it's really hard to tell the difference as a, as a batter. So your decision making is challenged immediately. So you have a split second to say, is this going to break away from me as a righty or is it going to move up on me? Ellie Armistead, the shortstop. So again, taking all of those, those thoughts into account, what is the approach for these hitters? What pitch do they feel comfortable seeing, hitting, and trying to attack throughout this ballgame? And that communication too, Tony Baldwin talked to us. He was so pleased with the talk in the dugout in that first game against Oklahoma. They were trying to figure out how do we get hits? What is the best approach? There was open communication from the batters in the Georgia dugout and that was huge. And a big piece of that is to not dwell on the negative at bats you have because against Oklahoma in that game one that they won, they had 10 strikeouts still. I mean, they struggled in some ways at the plate, but the communication never wavered. It wasn't poor, poor, pitiful me. It was, here's what I saw. Here's how I can help my teammate adjust so they can have a better opportunity the next time that they get up to the plate. CJ Landrum on deck if Armistead can reach. Said looking for her first hit of the weekend. And that'll be it. How about a long ball for your first hit of the weekend? A two run shot for Ellie Armistead. Her fifth home run of the season. That's three really quality at-bats for Georgia in a row. Sarah Mosley gets on with the walk. Sydney Chambly battles, has a long at-bat against Ashley Rogers. And then Ellie Armistead, with two strikes, is able to fight off a pitch that's tailing away from her. But she gets incredible extension on this pitch. Look at how well she covers the outside corner of the plate. And it is able to get her barrel on plane and extended in the opposite field direction to get full pop on that swing. And that's just a really nice job as a batter. That's a tough pitcher's pitch. That's not a fatty left over the middle of the plate. That's one that she's got to go and have a beautiful swing on. And she does just that. Got the savage chain rocking for that home run. Georgia now with 65 home runs on the season. They came in top six in the nation in home runs. This is C.J. Landrum at the plate. Hopper back to Fox, and there is out number three. Home run action in Knoxville already. The true freshman, Ellie Armistead, comes up big time a home run to give Georgia the lead. They're up two to one. Georgia on top thanks to a two run blast from Ellie Armistead going to the bottom of the second inning. We have some experienced legendary coaches in this game. Lou Harris Champer 15th among active coaches in career wins. Ralph and Karen Weekly also on that list. All three of these coaches have over 1,100 wins in their career. It's impressive. Yeah, they're just staples in this conference. And what I love about these two coaches and the coaches on this list is, is they set the standard for excellence in the SEC. They're a huge reason why the SEC has gone from never winning national championships to being in the hunt every single year. 
footing almost every single team in the entire conference in the postseason pretty consistently. I mean, again, they're the coaches that have laid the foundation and started the success of this conference. Yeah, the Weeklies have seven Women's College World Series appearances. Lou Harris Champer, six World Series appearances in her career. Kiki Malloy leading off things for Tennessee. Tennessee got a couple of free passes off of Mary Wilson Avant in that first inning. One of them came around to score off an RBI double from Allie Shipman. Yeah, throughout the series, it's really been Ashley Morgan, Madison Weber, and Allie Shipman that have done the bulk of the work, especially from the RBI production standpoint. So you're hoping if you're Karen and Ralph Weekly to see some production from the bottom of the lineup, I think that's why you move Kiki Malloy down. She offers a little something different. Mm. <laughs> you're just trying to mix it up and you're trying to make something happen. And by putting Kiki Malloy at the, at the bottom, she is a power threat, she's a speed threat, she can do a lot. And she's gonna have the opportunity if she gets hot to turn over the lineup. You know, for this Tennessee team, they really haven't been healthy this year. And two of their key players that are out right now are Amanda Ayala and Riley West. And they hold the two highest batting averages on the team thus far. Now, granted, they've played less games because they have been out recently. But two big pieces that they're trying to hope that they'll have back by the postseason. Ayala dealing with an ankle injury. Riley West coming back from an illness, non-COVID related. Really staying alive. And, and that's what's been impressive about this Tennessee squad all season long is they really haven't had a full healthy team at any point in the season. So they've had people trying to fill in the gaps. And you get some players that emerge out of those situations, like a Madison Weber who's hitting leadoff now that maybe wouldn't have gotten the other opportunity otherwise. Eighth pitch to Kiki Malloy, and she will take a seat. First strikeout for Mary Wilson Avant today. Going with the drop on the inside corner. This is where the diversity of Mary Wilson Avan is so important. She can throw to all quadrants. She can mix speeds. She can mix planes. As you saw in that last at bat, she was throwing Kiki Mooy up and out, up and in, down and out, down and in. It's a big challenge for opposing hitters. So for the first time in this series, we will see KK McCrary step in out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Hadn't seen any of these Georgia pitchers this weekend, but gets the start in the DP role today. Mary Wilson, Avan ahead, 0-2. Hey, quick shout out to KK McCrary's sister, Hannah McCrary, who was competing in the NCAA Gymnastics Championships last weekend on floor. Congrats to her for making it that far with Missouri. Goes down and digs for it, it will drop. And gets past Jada Kearney, KK McCrary on for Tennessee. Uh, this is KK McCrary learning from the bat in front of her. Goes downstairs, finds the plane of this drop ball. Gets it off the end of her bat and it just dies right here in front of Jada Kearney. And it's lucky that this ball didn't have much acceleration because if that gets through her legs into the wall, you're looking at a potential triple for KK McCrary. And First that's gonna be a better job blocking that up for an outfielder. First hit for McCrary since April 14th against Tennessee State. And now the nine hitter, Anna Fox, with one on.
We welcome you to Rocky Top for game three of this series in this top 25 matchup between Georgia and Tennessee. Courtney Lyle, three-time All-American and national champion. Caleb Bro with you. Georgia on top, two to one, thanks to a two-run home run in the last inning. But Tennessee just strung together back-to-back -to -back hits. That's Anna Fox on first now. The bottom of the lineup for Tennessee is coming through in this inning. Just finding ways to get on base. This is an outside pitch that Fox just goes with. Doesn't hit it too hard, but finds a way to keep it fair. Pushes it down the line. And now Tennessee's in business. Runners on first and second with the top of their lineup coming up. Tennessee got on the board first thanks to an RBI double from Ali Shipman in the first inning. Ellie Armistead responded, though, for Georgia with a two-run home run in the second. And now Tennessee threatening again, the top of their order. Madison Weber, the first time we have seen her this season as they're hitting in that top spot. Now you gotta love Sundays in the SEC and Sundays in general in the softball world because you're looking at just gritty performances from both teams. And especially in this series right here, you have both aces going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Mary Wilson Avant for Georgia and Ashley Rogers on the other side for Tennessee. They had a tight matchup in game one. Tennessee taking the victory three to one. And here they are back at it in game three, trying to do the best that they're the best they can to give their teams an opportunity to win this game. Treasury Point Dexter will come in to run for KK McCreary at second base. And back to the pitching matchup, this is the matchup we wanted to see, Kayla. Remember, Mary Wilson Avan is the pitcher who got the win over Oklahoma, the number one team in the nation who hadn't lost this season on Tuesday. Yeah, it's been a, a big week and a tough week for the Bulldogs. Poindexter safe at third. Both runners advance into scoring position. This is a really nice reaction from the pinch runner. Poindexter just sees this ball get away from Peyton Bordeaux just a little bit. And as soon as she sees the bobble, she takes off beautiful slide to the backside of the base. And once again, this is a Tennessee team that challenges opposing catchers. Madison Weber is through. One run comes across looking for two. They will get it. Two runs come across the plate thanks to Madison Weber. This is a great piece of hitting by Madison Weber. First of all, she understands with runners on second and third that she's trying to look to pull the ball so she can advance the runner and get a cheap run, worst case scenario. Best case scenario, this ball sneaks through the 3-4 hole and she picks up two big time RBIs to give Tennessee the lead back in this ball game. has already taken games one and two in this series. They won game one on Friday, three to one. Yesterday, it was a nine to three victory for Tennessee. Kaylin Hannon, foul. Georgia looking for two. We'll just get the lead runner. Kaylin Hannon will reach. Kaylin Hannon just has a little bit too much speed for Georgia to be able to turn this double play. Ellie Armstead, just a nice little flip over to get the easy out at second base. brings us to Ashley Morgan, who has had a phenomenal bat this week. 
Game one of the series, she was three for three with a double, a home run, a couple of RBI. Yesterday, one for two. She's been really impressive in this series. Getting in the three spot today, and it's because of her ability to hit RBIs in. And she's so mature at the plate, she's gonna have quality at bats. She looks confident. She knows what her plan is and her approach is to be successful. She's gonna go attack the pitches that she sees that she wants to rip. so complimentary of Ashley Morgan. She really went to work. Coaches love it when they have depth on their roster, especially when it pushes their everyday starters. And Ashley Morgan was being pushed by Madison Weber at first base. Well, she has gone to work and earned that spot. Yeah, you gotta love when competition on the team creates a great situation for both players. You're pushed to your max. You're Ashley Morgan. Ash, excuse me, Madison Weber was kind of breathing down her neck to get that first base position. Almost took over that role last season. Ashley Morgan got the opportunity to go back and say, you know what, I, I want this, I want to own this spot, I want to own my place in this lineup. And her improvements over her career have shown that work effort. In the fall, she was swinging the bat better than anybody. Karen Weekly said she's not overanalyzing now. When she steps in, you know you're getting a good at bat like we're seeing right here. Avan is going to win that one, though, for second strikeout of the day, but not before Tennessee takes the lead thanks to Madison Weber. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Game three between two top 25 teams, Georgia and Tennessee battling here on Rocky Top. Tennessee back on top by one. Courtney Lyle and Kayla Bro with you. And we were really looking forward to this game three because you've got the aces in the circle for both teams. And these teams are pretty evenly matched. They really are, and they're showing it in their performances. A lot like game one, we saw Mary Wilson Avant and Ashley Rogers go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We're seeing back-and-forth scoring, and what this game is going to come down to is which pitcher is going to have the endurance to finish this game and stay as strong as they possibly can in the circle. Ashley Rogers will be facing Peyton, Peyton Bordeaux for the first time here in this third inning. She's the nine-hitter and the catcher for Georgia. Georgia's runs were thanks to that two-run home run from Ellie Armistead. Her first hit this week, she came into the game 0 for 10. But then Tennessee retook the lead in the bottom half of the inning. And for both of these pitchers so far, we've seen a little bit of cracks in their armor, giving up some free passes. Mary Wilson Avant for Georgia really struggled to get comfortable in the circle right away, give up a couple hit by pitches. The two-run home run was only a two-run home run because of a walk given up by Rodgers. So both of these pitchers have room to get a little bit more comfortable, get a little bit more crisp with their pitches as this game continues on. Two strikes to Bordeaux. To right field in the corner. The dangerous corner. It gets past Madison Weber. Excuse me, that's Poindexter out in right field. And Peyton Bordeaux with a double. This is the second time we've seen a Georgia hitter really crush that curveball 
from Ashley Rogers. The extension was beautiful by Bordeaux and just out of the reach of Poindexter over there in right field off the tip of the glove for the double for Bordeaux. I think that's what's so impressive about this Georgia offense is their ability to make adjustments at the plate. They're really strong one through nine. Everybody in their lineup can has that home run potential power. And they cover the outside corner of the plate really well, especially the righties in this lineup. After watching them all season long, their swings on, on the curve ball are really strong on the extension piece. Oh, they're gonna rule that an error, Kayla, on the right fielder. So Bordeaux reaching on a fielding error in E9. Mm, that's a tough call. I think that can be caught without a doubt. But I think you should reward the batter for a well-hit ball. It's in the corner of the outfield. It's a really tough play. The percentage that you make that catch is probably lower than a routine out. So I don't know. I might give the nod for a base hit on that one. Let's take another look at it. When she's running in stride. She doesn't hesitate. Savannah Sykes going to left. And now Bordeaux at third. Savannah Sykes after popping out her first at bat. It's a better job on this at bat. Just getting up with that rise ball. This is one that's a little bit lower in the zone than Ashley Rogers likes to throw that little lower rise. But since Sykes get on, gets on plane, tacks it and just drives it through the 5-6 hole. Oh, and Sydney Kuma steps in. And that hitter. I was gonna say, she is their leading home run hitter. What an opportunity for her to get her first home run of the weekend. But instead, she'll take her base and load the bags. Yeah, that's a situation where if you're Georgia, you'll take the free pass all day, but you want somebody like Kuma to be in there and hit. She had two home runs off of Oklahoma in their Tuesday doubleheader. That just shows you she's the type of player, and we heard this from associate co head coach Tony Baldwin, that. She elevates her level of play when the competition gets tougher. She's not afraid of facing the best pitcher in the country, facing the best team in the country. She rises to the occasion, and that's what she loved to see. So Megan Rhodes Smith in the circle right now, talking with her battery, Ashley Rogers and Allie Shipman. Rhodes Smith had a pretty outstanding career when she was a Lady Ball, three Women's College World Series appearances. Still in the record book in several pitching categories. Third in ERA, fourth in strikeouts, fifth in wins. I think there's a great appreciation for having a pitching coach that's been in your shoes. She has so much respect. Ashley Rogers has so much respect for somebody like Rhodes Smith that has the ability to give her advice, but it's coming from a place that I know it's exactly what it's like to be where you are right now. Jada Kearney has the bases loaded. Jada Kearney hit a home run yesterday, a solo shot. She was one for two. She is the only player for Georgia hitting over 300 in SEC play. Jammed her. Oh Look at oh, Ashley Rogers coming all. Yeah, look, Ashley Rogers coming all the way out of the circle. Sees this better than Ali Shipman does behind the plate. So she's trying to make a play. As it gets jammed, you can see Shipman just has a little bit of a late reaction. If Ashley Rogers is able to get there almost faster than she was. Ball and two strikes. Those low pop-ups off the bat are so hard for a catcher to see, especially with the face mask on. 
had a little bit more height on it. I think that Alice Shipman's able to make that play all day. is loaded for Kearney, a huge opportunity for Georgia, and it's foul. A few feet, that's three runs right there for Georgia, just missing slightly. Again, Georgia obviously has the plan to go and attack. The outside pitch from Ashley Rogers, that curveball moving away from right, he's there all over that pitch. And Tennessee's lucky that this one just falls about two feet foul. That one is fair. One run across. Georgia thought about two as Shipman tries to corral it. But Jada Kearney sends one home, and we're tied. Yeah, you got to love this back and forth matchup that we're seeing for both of these teams today. Jada Kearney, again, just battling on this outside pitch. They keep going to the outside corner against righties on Georgia, and they are clearly all over it. This is another nice job of letting the ball travel, letting it get deep, and then having great. She's their leader in average at 360. And it hit her. Right in the elbow, that will score a run. Georgia on top. This pitch from Callie Turner. It's going to break right in to that front elbow of Lacey Fincher. You know, for me, this one's close. I think the where Fincher's elbow is in relationship to the, the line of the chalk the batter's box is so close to her reaching over it, but you have the right to everything within that line, including being on the chalk. So maybe a touch of a lean in, but she has the right to that box and, and that's what the umpire calls. So that's what Tennessee's gonna have to deal with in this situation. Still no outs for Sarah Mosley. Base is still loaded. Mosley over the head of Turner. And everybody's safe. Another run across. And this is what you get when you're facing Callie Turner. It's a little miss hit by Mosley. She gets jammed. It barely pokes over the head, or excuse me, over the glove of Turner. Ivy Davis tries to make the gloved backhand to flip it to two to get the force out, but, or excuse me, Anna Fox tries to make the flip to Ivy Davis, which is not in time. Kuma scores on that play. And this is an interesting predicament for Tennessee because not something we see very often is having Ashley Rogers being pulled so early in this game. They never really had the luxury of being able to pull her just because Callie Turner's been injured a lot of this season. Oh, Cindy Chambly still working hard with that bat. The runs coming early and often for Georgia. They had only scored four runs in the series before today. That's what we're talking about. This Georgia team is so hard, you can never count them out just because of their power and pop. When they get hot, they're a shrieky team. Cindy Chambly shows this. She does a nice job of keeping her swing simple, just popping this up the middle, and adding to the run support for Mary Wilson Avant. So now it's Ellie Armistead who had the two-run homer in the second inning. Base is still loaded. Fincher at third, Mosley at second, Shamley at first. A monster inning for Georgia here in the third. Four runs on five hits, still no outs. Yeah. 
Lucky Mr. Pickle, he might be working in game three. Ashley Morgan makes the grab. That's the first out. Unlike a lot of other teams in the country, I mean, they are just so good at passing the bat down when someone gets hot. This is Jaden Fields coming in as a pinch hitter. She was the hero on Tuesday against Oklahoma to walk it off for the Bulldogs. Georgia has already scored four runs in this inning. Tennessee has had to make a pitching change to Callie Turner. <laughs> Against number one Oklahoma on Tuesday, three for five, had a triple because she missed home plate on her home run. And so it was awarded the triple, but eventually won the game for Georgia. Yeah, and Jaden Fields' performance against Oklahoma is a really a reflection of this entire Georgia team. She hits this giant home run, misses home plate, gets the home run taken from her, so it's a triple. But then she gets an opportunity for a little bit of redemption, comes up with runners in scoring position, hits a walk-off single. Segern dropped it. Run comes across, bases still loaded. Chelsea Segern bobbled it. Chelsea Sager knows that she has to make this play. It's a slow roller, a little bit of a chopper, easily playable for the out at home, but just pulls her glove away a little bit too soon before she fully gets this ball controlled, before she can make the throw to home. And that's a big error. Those are outs that you have to have in this situation, not only to keep the runs down, but to help your pitcher out. Hayden Bordeaux, deep and snagged by Hannon. One run will cross the plate. Mosley makes it home safely. What a big inning for Peyton Bordeaux. She starts by going oppo, hits one to the wall in the opposite field, and then takes this inside pitch and is a few feet away from the home run. It doesn't fall for a hit, but she gets a nice sack fly. Again, just another insurance run for the Georgia Dogs. Making it harder for Tennessee to try and make a comeback in this ball game. Georgia has batted around in this inning. Top of the order we go, Savannah Sykes, who singled earlier in the inning, but that was off Ashley Rogers. You see why Georgia can be so dangerous here. <laughs> Six runs on five hits here in the third. Sykes reaches out for it, and Segern makes the tag. Not before a ton of damage is done. How about Georgia? Getting the opportunity to back or bat around. It was started by Peyton Bordeaux, but then a string of singles led to a huge run production inning for the Georgia Bulldogs. These teams have some postseason history. Let's take you back to Super Regionals in Athens back in 2018. Kaylin Hannon, as a pinch hitter, gets an RBI single to tie this game up for Tennessee. This is game two. They've got to win it. But then Georgia sends Courtney Emanuel to the plate, and she does what Courtney Emanuel does, a solo home run would eventually send Georgia to the Women's College World Series. It was the last time the Georgia Bulldogs have been to Oklahoma City, but something neither of these teams will forget. Postseason coming up already. The selection show will be May 16th. We'll have every round, every pitch cover for you on our ESPN family of networks. We're getting so close to mayhem. It's getting me excited. You know who the pitcher was back in that 2018 Super Regional? It was Mary Wilson Avant. 
that got the win in game two. She knows what it's like to pitch at this level in the Women's College World Series. It's so impressive about her. She's been the true ace on this staff for so long. This is her fifth year. Tons of experience, tons of composure, and she's really the leader of this entire pitching staff for Georgia. I feel comfortable right now too, Kayla, because her offense just put up six runs in the top half of this inning. Yeah, that's what was missing in game one. The offense only scored one. You're just not giving your pitcher a good enough chance to win, especially against a good team like Tennessee. But the way they jumped all over Ashley Rogers today was so impressive. Allie Shipman rolls it to Sykes at third. Well, for the 42nd straight year, the NFL Draft is on ESPN. It's also on the NFL Network. And the Game Day crew will be on ABC again this year, covering it from the college perspective. It all comes to you next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with all three days on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. Segment lays off of it. She was hit by a pitch to reach in the first inning. It feels like a lifetime ago we saw the Tennessee Bats come to the plate after Georgia batted around in the top half of this inning. And there's a lot of game left here today, but I think even after the break for Mary Wilson Avan, already against Allie Shipman and Chelsea Sagern, she just looks to be a little bit sharper. She's finding the zone a little bit more consistently. And some of the balls she threw in that first inning especially were just too wild. And there's a, a balance. You want to throw pitches that are unhittable, that are outside of the zone, that are chase pitches, but you don't want them to be so far out of the zone that the batter is not even tempted to nibble at them. You gotta make it tough for them. Segern liked that one, to left it goes, and Chelsea Segern has her first hit of the day, her first hit of the series. This drop ball again, just a little bit too much elevated in the zone. Doesn't have that break or the location necessary to get Segern out on this pitch, so Segern does a good job of getting her barrel up to the level of that pitch and just finding a way to keep it simple. It's a nice shot in the opposite field. So one out for Ivy Davis with a runner on. Davis was the hero yesterday, had a grand slam, went one for two to help Tennessee get game two of the series, nine to three. Ivy Davis is a huge transfer from Arizona. Plays a huge role on this Tennessee team, covers the shortstop position, a defensive position that they desperately needed for somebody to fill in. Hopper to Armistead, off the glove of Kuma, covering second, both runners good to go. And speaking of the shortstop and defensive plays, this is a play that has to be made. Armistead does a good job of flipping this over, and it looks to me like Kuma just strides a little bit too early in the wrong direction. You can see her foot is heading more towards the pitcher circle versus going out towards Armistead at shortstop. It's a little off kilter, not able to make that catch, but she needs to be able to make that catch and delay her stretch a little bit so she can read the ball first. And that's Let's part of the 20. growing pains of this young Georgia team is they are so raw defensively and they've made making improvements, but it's an area that they know that they have to make the routine plays. You know, coaches aren't worried about the flashy plays. Those happen organically, but the routine plays, those are the ones you have to come through with. And it's the 58th error of the season by Georgia. That's more than any other SEC team.
Kiki Malloy in now facing Mary Wilson Avant. Two on. Venture was trying for it, just ran out of room. This Georgia team trying to avoid back-to-back -back series sweeps. They were swept by Arkansas last weekend. Trying to pick up a win here to avoid being swept by Tennessee. Back to Avant. She looks to second, looking for two. It won't be in time. Two down. This is a nice shot by Avant to go ahead and get the lead runner on this play. She's fielding her precision nicely, pivoting, making the throw. And a good recovery from the Georgia defense right here to get an out at the lead runner. Runners on the corners for KK McCrary, who picked up a hit in her first at bat. That was in the second inning. Runner going. And Bordeaux can't get the ball there in time. Two in scoring position now as Malloy advances. Malloy picks up her 32nd stolen base of the year on this, and she is the best runner in the entire SEC. Leads the conference with 32. And that's a no doubt opportunity. Peyton Bordeaux had a hard time throwing these runners out all weekend long. And that's what you like to see if your Tennessee is sticking to your bread and butter, going with what's gotten you to this point so far, putting another runner in scoring position. And Kiki Malloy's in some <laughs> high ranks among some incredible SEC players. You talk about Kayla Kowalik, Leah Andrews. Those are some of the most talented leadoff hitters in the entire country, and she's got them by about 10 stolen bases. I was going to say, there's a, there's a pretty big uh, discrepancy there between first and second from where Kiki Malloy is. Yeah, and I think that's just a coaching style. I think Coaches Ralph and Karen Leafley like to push the envelope. They like having those speedy players on the base pass. And most importantly, they like to put pressure on the defense. And when you recognize that Payne Bordeaux is only throwing about less than 15% of the runners out, you take your chances. All are in your favor. Kiki Malloy has more stolen bases than Georgia does as a team. Two count to McCrary here. Two in scoring position. Off the end of the bat rolls foul. Georgia had just a monster top of the third inning. They scored six runs. Tennessee was forced into a pitching change from Ashley Rogers to Callie Turner. Well, we've seen so many times this season that the home run has really been the big hit for Georgia, that's been their go-to. When they need something to come through, it's been a solo shot that gets the scoring started, but really it was a lot of singles put together in that, in that inning. Just quality situational hitting, going with the pitch, not trying to do too much with it, that led to a big time inning. You add that to a couple of hit by pitches and uh, things just moved right along for the Georgia offense. Puma charging on it, and there is out number three. Tennessee will leave two in scoring position. Georgia looking to add to their nice lead when we come back. I don't think we talk about Kayla Kowalik enough. I'm extremely popular, so how about we uh, throw a question at Bro? Do you think teams like Washington and others have a true chance at getting a national championship with only one strong arm in the circle, or will it come down to two aces like UCLA, among others, have this year. 
That's a great question, and I think it's it's such a great debate because historically you've seen some pitchers, and I go back to somebody like a Taryn Moat, a Jackie Traina, Megan King for Florida State a couple years ago, that have basically put the weight on their shoulders and pitched almost every single inning of the World Series and have gotten their team to a national championship. So it's doable. But you look at historically and how much better offenses are getting and look at some breakout teams like Oklahoma that just have so much power, UCLA. It's a huge advantage to have two pitchers. But I think that's the beauty of the World Series is if you have one pitcher like an Ashley Rogers, like a Mary Wilson Avant, that they can shine in ways they can conquer the difficulty of pitching game after game, day after day, and you get these incredible stories that are really memorable in World Series history. It's really interesting to see how that kind of plays out this year. Um, and if you want to see some good pitching too, don't forget, um, you can see teams like, oh, UCLA and Washington coming up <laughs> after we are done here on this game. I mean, just some incredible and softball I, today. Uh, and I was about to say, I was about to bring up, you know, Washington just beat yesterday Megan Faramo and Rachel Garcia combined in game two. So just because you have two doesn't mean you're unbeatable. But it is an advantage when you have to play back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back days. And it's why it's such a big deal that Callie Turner for Tennessee right here in the circle is getting healthier just to take some of the weight off of Roger's shoulders, and that's what George is missing. Somebody to emerge behind Avant to say, you know what, I can pitch four or five quality innings and help our team get a win. And they just really haven't seen that consistently from anybody this year. Uh, Karen Weekly for Tennessee was so excited to see Callie Turner start to get get that groove back, if you will. And they saw it against South Carolina last weekend in game two of the series. She went six innings, got the win, only allowed one hit. Got the win, didn't walk anybody or strike anybody out, but got the job done as Sydney Kuma looking for two. No, she'll go back to first. And Kuma now on a six game hit streak. This is a nice shot by Kuma. Gets a ball that breaks into her and back over the plate from the outside corner. And she just pops it into the gap to pick up a nice single to lead this inning off. And that's exactly what you want. You don't want to let up after you just put up six runs in the last inning on this Tennessee team. You should come out right away and you set the tone from that leadoff at bat. Jenny Kearney let that one go by. Allie Shipman keeping an eye on Kuma. She's four for four on the base paths this year. Seven miles an hour right there. That off speed, the change up, that's going to be had to be thrown more consistently from Callie Turner if she wants to be successful moving forward because that's so tough for these Georgia hitters to take that kind of velocity change, especially with two strikes. Balls, two strikes to Kearney. Strike three, the first strikeout for Callie Turner. That's something we heard from Karen Weekly is that all of her other pitches really play off of that changeup. So after the off speed, she goes with this beautiful drop ball that breaks way off the table right at the end of this pitch to get a nice swing and miss from Jada Kearney. First outs, Kuma still on first, brings Lacey Fincher, who reached on a hit by a pitch and scored a run in the third.
Tennessee looking for two. You bet. Tennessee with their 14th double play. Tennessee making it look easy, rolling it up. Sagern to Fox to Morgan. All season, so you can watch anywhere. That should be a good one coming up over on SEC Network. Arkansas, of course, trying to stay at the top of the SEC standings. They are one of those ranked teams, but Florida's right there too. Yeah, and Mizzou taking game one of that series was a huge deal for Florida, who dropped their series opener against South Carolina. It's a big upset. It's a game that Florida typically doesn't lose, but they did. So the Gators catch a little break with Missouri stealing one from Arkansas in game one. But Arkansas versus Mizzou, game is so good because both teams have the ability to hit the long ball so well. Tons of offense. Should be a good one. A chance to pull that one up on your second screen if you want to stay with us here. Georgia trying to avoid being swept by Tennessee. It would be the first time if Tennessee can come back, and still plenty of time, it would be their first SEC series sweep of the season. We've got a lot of ball game left. This is an opportunity for Tennessee to dig deep. Sundays are so tough in this conference because you've seen the pitcher so many times, you know their approach, you have the scouting reports. So how can you make the correct adjustments from game one to go and attack your opposing pitcher correctly? And they're gonna have to start attacking Avant a little bit better as they approach the third time through the lineup. And that's what was so impressive about Georgia's performance in this game so far is they had a plan against Ashley Rogers who didn't look her sharpest today and they went after her curveball and absolutely crushed it, kicked her out of the game. Rogers just making it through two innings, five hits, three earned runs, and a strikeout to her stat line today. It was interesting watching Ashley Rogers' performance. She's usually so good because her rise ball is her best pitch, and she's able to throw it in so many different levels. She can hit it at the knees, she can hit it about mid, mid thigh to belt and she can throw it, you know, up at the chest and eye area and just, it wasn't sharp today. So she had to go to some of her secondary pitches, which I thought Georgia attacked very well. And you're gonna have days like that. And the important part is how do you come back the next time you get out in the circle to get some redemption, to make sure that those are a little bit crisper. You can use every single pitch in your arsenal or your best pitch in your arsenal at least. Strikeout for Mary Wilson. Avant, that's number three today for her. I like this pitch by Avant. Just a little back door on the outside corner that freezes up Fox. And that's how you know she's done better throughout this game is that pitch is starting to look a little bit more crisp. That's her third strikeout of the day. She's just finding more consistency and she's finding a better rhythm as this game has moved on. Top of the order for Tennessee, Madison Weber, who is four for eight in the series with a double and four RBI. Two of those RBI came in the second inning. And Weber has herself another hit. Weber goes after this pitch the same exact pitch that Anna Fox just struck out on. But Madison Weber picks that up, reaches her barrel out there, hits off the very end of her bat and just falls in for an easy base hit, trying to get something going for the Vols. Karen Weekly told us Madison Weber was that player that, you know, just outside the lineup, you wish you had a spot for her because she was competing so well. Ended up filling in when Ashley Morgan was out, was waiting for that opportunity. And then here she is working herself into the lineup, even when Ashley Morgan has come back so strong, still found a way to help out. Tennessee down a couple of players. No Riley West and no Amanda Ayala. Still out with injuries. Yeah. 
Yeah, you really got to love when players rise to the occasion and take advantage of their opportunities. That's what this game is all about, is injuries are going to happen, especially in this COVID environment that we are in. We've already seen Tennessee have to sit out a series because of COVID protocol. You just never know when your number is going to get called, so you have to be ready to answer the call. And Weber was, and she's going to be really hard to take out of the lineup, especially now. She's been so hot the last few games and has earned her way into that leadoff spot. And the one thing that she does really well that Karen Week really, really liked and is so important as a leadoff hitter is her ball to strikeout ratio or her walk to strikeout ratio is fantastic. Well, six strikeouts on the season for Weber as, Kate, as Kaylin Hannon is hit by a pitch and 15 walks for Weber. This way away from Avant. This isn't even close. Again, this is another pitch. We've seen it consistently today. She struggles with the lefties in the box. The ball gets away from her, and it's her third hit by pitch of the day. The second time she's hit Hannon. Hannon was able to come home after that hit by a pitch in the first inning off the bat of Allie Shipman. And this is a lefty heavy lineup for Tennessee. They pack lefties throughout the entire lineup one through nine. It's not gonna be a strategy if you're a lefty. You're maybe struggling at the plate a little bit, put your toes on the chalk and hope Avant tries to bring it inside to you and get a free pass. get you one of these big hats Lady Ball Locos have on today. What'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> sure. You you give me one, Courtney, I'll put it on for you. I don't know if it'll fit in our camera shot. I'll overnight it to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> Always some kind of awesome theme with the Lady Ball Locos. Yeah, Sometimes they're... I'm unsure what it is. They are dedicated. They're there every single game. They always have a theme. They come through. They like to see Ashley Morgan coming through, too. Two runs are going to score, and Ashley Morgan slides into second. That'll get the Locos fired up. This is her fourth double of the series. She's done such a nice job through with the big RBIs just drives this ball to the gap and this game is so there's so much left in this game still and you gotta love the fight from balls to try and keep themselves in this game the lady ball locos are loving it now Morgan five for eight in this series just slept on a couple of RBI and we'll have a pinch runner go out to second Josie Willingham. So now just one away, a runner in scoring position for Allie Shipman, who is on fire. A six game hit streak for Allie Shipman. She's hitting over 470 during that time. Allie Shipman has really benefited from that COVID break. You know, you talk about it's so rare throughout a season to have uh, 10 days where you can't really do much. You have to go back a little bit, work on some little mechanical things, take some time off. It just doesn't happen very often. She's taking advantage of that. Willingham diving into third as Shipman pops up, and now she is one step closer to coming around. 
Yeah, still a productive out when you have Willingham able to tag up and advance to third at least. And that's what this game is all about, is you're going to inevitably get out. It's part of softball. It's a failure sport. But if your outs can be productive, you can advance a runner, you can have good situational hitting, have a quality at bat, whatever it may be. It's so, so important in the long scheme of this game. Chelsea Segard steps in with a run 60 feet away. Two outs. Three and two thirds innings, given up seven hits, four earned runs, hasn't walked anybody, has three strikeouts, but has hit three batters. Yeah, it has been the walks in, the ga in this game. It's been the hit by pitches. All thrown to lefties in the lineup. All just pitches that got way too up and in on the left handed batters, curveball getting away from her, whatever it may be. And there's a fourth. Gets Segern on the elbow the second time she has been hit. She is one of those lefty hitters, obviously. And she's really trying to challenge the lefty hitters on the inside corner of the plate, trying to throw it right up under the hands. But her control in that location has not been good enough to try and hammer that pitch consistently today. And Tennessee doesn't have to do much but wear it and take their free pass. So now it's runners on the corners for Ivy Davis as Rachel Fico comes out to the circle for Georgia. Ivy Davis with some fireworks last night. Bases loaded, what does she do? Yeah, she's going to yard to left field. Yeah, a little bit up and in, and she just takes this one out of the park. But what I love most about this at bat, it was actually her second opportunity yesterday with the bases loaded. She struck out on her first at bat with the bases loaded, and then the second time, she gets a grand slam. Talk about making an adjustment and coming back stronger later in the game and learning from your previous at bats. A transfer out of Arizona. Spent three seasons there, and it was just filling a hole that Tennessee needed at shortstop. Karen Weekly said, we got to not remember to not take the plays she makes for granted, like the grand slam. But also, she had a great catch running back to left field yesterday that she made look so easy that was not. Yeah, she's a really talented shortstop. Has the ability to make some really good plays with her range. She's pretty quick. She can run down some balls, like you said. She chased down a, a really great fly ball when the outfield was playing deep yesterday. She's also an incredible hitter, and she comes from an Arizona team that has so much power, and she brings that over to Tennessee from Arizona. 13 home runs leading the team on the year, 37 RBIs. Digs deep for it, bounces off of Sykes' glove. Run, one run comes across. Just haven't seen the cleanest defense from either of these teams today. This is a hard hit ball to Sykes over at third base. I mean, you can see the hop just kind of eats her up, handcuffs her a little bit, and she tries to keep it in front. But it just ricochets, and that's a big time run for Tennessee. You're going to take them any way that you can. Let's see how important it is to chip away at this score, and they've done this. I mean, we've got a ball game here, Courtney. Yeah, neither team has flinched when they've gotten down. They have both stayed composed. And remember, Tennessee gave up six runs in the top of the third, and here they are just down by two. 
There will be an error at third. And sometimes this is how it plays out. This is the third game of the series. You know your opponent so well. Sometimes it comes down to who's going to play the toughest defense, who's going to get the job done, who's going to come up with a clutch hit. Kiki Malloy to right. Fields trying to find it, and she will. A big catch for Jane Fields in right field. Tennessee trailing by two. A lot of great athletes, a lot of confidence. One of the most dominant forces in college softball. Left and back, and it's gone. UCLA Bruins, some of the best hitters in the country. And another highlight grab. Guess what is coming up at the top of the hour after we're done here in Knoxville, Washington and UCLA will be game four of the series. Pac-12 playing four game series this week, this season, but man, some dominating, some amazing pitchers in those games. Yeah, it's really interesting what the Pac-12 is doing. It's only three games count for their conference record. So although they're playing four games, right now this series is split one-to-one -one in terms of the conference race. Gabby Plain pitched in both games for Washington that count for the conference. Wouldn't be surprised if you see her again in game three. But I'm really impressed with Washington. They hit 14 hits off of Ferremo and Garcia combined from UCLA in the circle. It's a big deal that you're hitting both of those pitchers extremely well. Beth Moens and Michelle Smith will have that call for you. It's coming up at the top of the hour. We'll get you there as soon as we are done here. And Ashley Rogers has re-entered for Tennessee. Okay, this is a, a pretty typical move from a Tennessee bullpen is Ashley Rogers gets the start, goes back into the bullpen, works out some of the kinks that she may need to fix and has an opportunity to come back out. And we'll be surprised if she goes the rest of the way because Callie Turner is now scrapped. She cannot come back and re-enter. Rodgers was pull, pulled in the third inning when Georgia loaded the bases with no outs. They were able to plate six runs in that inning. Sarah Mosley has only seen Rogers once today, and she walked in the second. Sarah Mosley's been a really big bright spot for George in the last few weeks. She's come up with some incredibly clutch hits. It just seems like when the pressure's on, she comes through in big ways. She had a game-winning three-home run, three-run home run against Kentucky a few weeks ago to really turn the tide for Georgia. Yeah, that completed a seven-run comeback for Georgia, was the name of the SEC Newcomer of the Week following that performance. comes over to make the play one away. You know, thinking more about putting Ashley Rogers back into this ball game, going back to the Tennessee side of things, I think that shows the confidence that you have in your offense's ability to score runs, especially against Avant. You've already put up six. When Karen and Ralph Weekly make the switch back to Rogers, just saying, okay, we're going to put our ace back in. You guys got to do your job offensively and score runs, and we have confidence in you. Because of they didn't think that Tennessee had the ability to come back in this game. You wouldn't waste Georgia's senior ace one more time in this series. And Tennessee's a team that can certainly put up runs. They average just over six runs a game. Obviously, they have hit that mark today. Sydney Chambly reaches down into the glove of Malloy. Someone who has had success against Ashley Rogers today. Ellie Armistead was the first to do it, a two-run shot in the second. This was all about getting whip on this pitch. It's an outside corner. 
pitch, well-located curveball that Rosa like said just gets beautiful extension on. She just drives the top half of her barrel right at the right time, perfect timing on the outside corner to get this ball to elevate and get out of the park. And again, that's a good pitch. That's a good pitch by Rogers. And they say she went. That's close. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know if her, her bat went all the way forward. Yeah, the game plan uh, against Armistead now moving forward, I don't think she'll see that same pitch on the outside corner. Wouldn't be surprised right here if you see Rogers ta challenge Armistead up again or trying to get her in on the hands or something in and tight. Oh, Rogers wanted that one. Yes, she did, and that's a dangerous pitch. That's close. And that's a pretty similar pitch to the one that Armistead was able to hit out of the park. But that's Rogers' bread and butter, so she went back to it. Full count coming to Ellie Armistead. Got to give credit to Armistead. She's battling and the eighth pitch of the bat. She's finding a way to after swinging and missing at the rise ball. She took the one that was well out of the zone. She fouled off the next one that was a little bit lower. So she's battling, she's learning. Oh, wow, it hops out of Ashley Morgan's glove. Ashley Rogers couldn't make the grab. It hit the ground. And so Ellie Armistead is aboard. Oh, this is a close play, and it's a tough play. This is the challenge for an infield, is that you never want your pitcher to have to move backwards to try and field a pop fly like that. You want the other defenders to take control, and Ashley Morgan tries to do that. She tries to call that out pretty early and go get it. Just not there quick enough. I actually think Ashley Rogers would have had a better time trying to catch that ball, but another error for Tennessee nonetheless. So one on for Jaden Fields, who reached on an error last time she was up. You know, we talked about some of the, the problems George has had defensively. Tennessee it has a pretty good fielding percentage on the year. They're at 978. They only have 24 errors on the season, so they've been pretty solid this season. Oh, and that hit fields. They're just making too many mistakes in this ball game. So this is another one right here by Rogers. This is trying to be a little bit of a backdoor curve doesn't quite get the snap off that it needs. So a couple of miscues for Tennessee, and there's two on, a runner on first and second for Peyton Bordeaux. And that's the seventh hit by pitch that we've seen in this ball game. It's a little bit of a wild afternoon for both of the pitching staffs here. It's dangerous out there. did go back and change Bordeaux's hit in the third inning to a double. They had originally ruled it reaching on an error, but she'll get the double to her credit, had an RBI also in the third.
Segern looking for it. Out number three, two left on for Georgia. Tennessee will try to catch up in the bottom half right now. Of course, he started out at Georgia playing quarterback, moved on to Ohio State for the last few seasons. So the Fields family will be locked in to the NFL draft starting up on Thursday. What an athletic family, my goodness. Athletic, competitive. I think what's so cool to hear about the Fields family is they build upon each other. They want that same level of success for both of them. Kind of push each other, jab each other a little bit about it. What do you think uh, Big Brother thought about Jaden Fields uh, beating, helping Georgia beat the number one team in the nation on Tuesday? Oh, man, he's, he's got to <laughs> love it. He's he been to a couple of their games this season. We've seen him in the stands, Jack Turner Field. They're supportive of each other. You gotta love that. Fields family hoping Georgia can pull out a win today here. Georgia's big inning came in the third when they scored six runs. And McCrary grounds out to third. Number nine hitter is Anna Fox, the second baseman. Singled in the second inning, but struck out the second time she faced Mary Wilson Avan. Drops it to left. Her second hit of the afternoon. There's been no shortage of hits in this game. This is another elevate, elevated pitch that Anna Fox just does a nice job of keeping her swing nice and simple, doesn't try and do too much. Doesn't get much power from the legs, but keeps her barrel on plane. This is her second hit of the day. Only had four hits coming into today's game. And you know, we heard from Coach Weekly, she's a defensive specialist. They like her at second base, but it's a big deal when she can come through and get a little base hit for your team. Yeah, she's really brought her bat today as Madison Weber pops up to third. So two away now. Kaylin Hannon will look to help out Anna Fox over on first. This game's been a battle for Mary Wilson Avant in the circle for Georgia. I think she's done a nice job of staying as strong as she can in the circle, but Tennessee has not allowed a three up, three down inning for themselves offensively. They've battled at the plate. They find, found their way on with either hit by pitches or base hits. They're making it tough for Avant without a doubt. Sure, we want to let you know if you're looking for you. Sorry, Kayla, if you're looking for UCLA and Washington, that's going to start over on the ESPN app in about three minutes at the top of the hour. We will get you to that game as soon as we're done with this one in Knoxville. That one ricocheted off of Bordeaux and Philip Friels, who's behind the plate. for the face mask. I was going to say, that's, you can't get out of the way of that one. <laughs> 
Cannon's pushed it to a full count with the runner on. And she will walk. So once again, Avan just trying to go up and in on the lefties, and they're just not biting. That pitch hasn't been consistent enough today. I don't think that's the right call with the full count. It's her first walk of the day. The good news for Tennessee, Ashley Morgan steps in now, five for eight with two doubles and four RBI in this series. She represents the go-ahead run at the plate, and the runners are going to try to advance. They will, as Bordeaux bobbled it. Tennessee has been so good today, reading any kind of deflection from the catcher, any kind of miss bobbled attempt behind the plate. And as soon as they see that in the dirt, and once again that ball pop out of Bordeaux's glove, they have been moving. Very good defensive, or excuse me, a very good base running team for the Vols. And that's something that the Weeklies have embedded into their teams, their entire coaching careers, is they want to put so much pressure on the defense. They want to put pressure, especially behind the plate, on catchers. Make them throw you out. Runners will hold. It's an interesting. I thought this was initially a foul ball. I think it potentially could have tipped off of actually Morgan's bat, but it doesn't. It's just a drop ball that hits the dirt. Avant goes back with the drop ball once again. But it was a nice job by Bordeaux of keeping that one in front because if that gets by her or behind her, that's a run for Tennessee. Morgan came into this game over her last nine outings, hitting 500. She had that two RBI double in the fourth. She's putting together a really nice at bat here. So composed, really good eye. And this is a really pivotal point in this game. Talking about a base hit, it's going to tie this ball game up. Ashley Morgan. Oh, lost it in the sun. It's Jaden Fields in right field, and she lost it in the sun. Ashley Morgan is safe. Two runs come across. We are tied. This is so frustrating for the Bulldogs because this ball is hit really hard, and it has Almost close potential to get out of the park, but Jane Fields not able to handle this in the sun. She goes back right at the warning track, has plenty of clearance between herself and the wall, but you can see right there, loses it in the sun. And that's a ball that has to be caught. You know how to read that. You need to turn your body, help with your glove, your brain sunglasses. That's such a big out for this game. We'll give Morgan the two RBI double, brings us to Allie Shipman. The go-ahead run on second. Shipman was the one to put Tennessee on the board in the first inning with an RBI double. <laughs> Underneath Armistead. Hey, we got a tie game on Rocky Top. Georgia looks to take back the lead as we move to the sixth. 
Ashley Morgan, all business for the Lady Vols today. Two for four, a couple of doubles, four RBI. She has tied this game up. Her weekend she's put together has been so impressive in the spark that the Vols have needed to give themselves an opportunity to sweep in this series. In, in total, she's six for nine on the weekend. She's got three doubles, six RBI. She's led this team offensively. And she got a little bit of a break on that last hit. Jaden Fields losing it in the sun, but she will absolutely take it if it means this game's knotted up for her Tennessee Vols. Tennessee going for the sweep of Georgia. They have not swept an SEC series this season. Ashley Rogers has re-entered back in the circle. We saw her come back in in the fifth after being pulled in the third. And then we go back to both of these pitching staffs and where they've made their mistakes and why it's an 8-8 eight to eight ball game. And all the innings they've given up run, it's preceded by a hit by pitch or a walk. And when you're giving free passes like that, those hits from Ashley Morgan, you know, typically if there's maybe one runner on or nobody on, those don't hurt you that much. But when you have two and three, you have pass balls, you have runners advance, it's just too much to handle inning after inning to keep the runs down. And Ashley Rogers will call everybody off to make that grab. This week's Sunday Night Baseball game is the series finales. Finale between the rival Padres and the Dodgers. LA took two or three last weekend at Petco. Our coverage begins at 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app with Baseball Sunday Night Countdown. I want to remind you too, if you're looking for UCLA Washington, that game has started over on the ESPN app. We will get you there as soon as we're done in Knoxville. Sydney Kuma. Georgia's home run leader with 13 on the season. She's reached twice today. Was hit by a pitch in the third and then had a single in the fourth. That single came off of Callie Turner. This is such an interesting game, Courtney, and it's so typical of a game in the SEC on a Sunday, the third game of a series, where you've just seen some incredible offensive glitzes, and then you've also seen some really poor defensive mistakes, some hiccups in the circle, and really moving forward in this game is going to come down to who's going to be the crispest defensively, I think, moving forward. Who's going to make that play? Who's going to help out their pitcher? Because neither of these pitchers have been anywhere close to perfect in the circle. They've struggled. They've had their challenges. The offenses have showed up today. But who defensively is going to step up and make a play? Yeah, both defenses with two errors apiece on the afternoon. And that's going to show a lot about the character of your team. Who's just going to be able to grit and gut this one out here in the last two innings, finish strong enough to get a W. Full count. This will be the eighth pitch to Kuma. Kaylin Hannon is going to come in and grab it. That sun's making it tough out there. We haven't seen the sun in a couple of days in Knoxville. A ball hung up in there in the air for a long time, too. Nice shot by Kaylin Hinnon just to secure the easy out. And I think you can see that Rogers' rise ball is working a little bit better as this game continues. She's induced a few more pop outs and fly outs in the last two innings. Comparatively, when she pitched in the first two innings of the ball game.
facing Jada Kearney. And right there, that's that rise ball that has the bite that she's looking for that induces a big swing and miss. And it just hasn't been as crisp and sharp as it usually was, but that one looks strong. You know, when Ashley Rogers is at her best, we talked about it a little bit, but her rise ball is able to sit at so many different heights throughout the strike zone, so she can throw it and really go after a hitter's weakness uniquely on their own. And then the way that rise ball gets kind of blurred to look similar to her curveball is where she finds a lot of success. And Georgia did a good job of today, uh, in my opinion, of really attacking the curveball really well. They almost kind of took that pitch away from her as a strikeout pitch or a miss hit pitch. They hammered it pretty well on the outside corner, especially the righties. But the rise ball is what she's going to have to go back to to get some big outs. A ball and two strikes to Kearney. These Georgia batters will certainly make a pitcher work. Rogers approaching 100 pitches. Another eight pitch at bat. And there is out number three. Tie game, can Tennessee's bats keep it going? Bottom of the six, we go. Sixteen combined runs here in this game, Georgia versus Tennessee. And in the third inning, Peyton Bordeaux got it started. Jada Kearney coming in hit. Sarah Mosley follows it with a single. They busted through. But in the fourth inning, the Lady Vols try to change things up. Yeah, Ashley Morgan came up big. She has been big in this series. A two RBI double. And then like clockwork, guess what? It happened again in the fifth inning. Ashley Morgan at the plate. Another two RBI double as Jaden Fields loses it in the sun. Morgan has been incredible in this series. Six for nine with six RBI. We've got a tie game as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. This is such an evenly matched game. You can see right there, seven hits to nine hits. They both have eight runs, both have two errors. So neither of these teams have been perfect, but kudos to Tennessee for being down five runs and scraping their way back and taking advantage of Georgia mistakes to tie this thing up. You know, with Ashley Rogers back in the circle, I feel like Tennessee now has the advantage. They have a little bit of the upper hand and most of the momentum. Well, that's huge to have your confidence in your ace to come back in. As, and as you said, she's looked better with that rise ball against the Georgia batters. And that confidence has gone over to her Tennessee hitters. It's Chelsea Segern, who's one for one today. A couple of hit by pitches.
Chelsea Segern. This time the catch is made by Jaden Fields at almost the exact same spot where she lost one in the sun earlier. Yeah, Fields looks a little bit more confident on this ball. Does a better job of camping underneath it, finding the wall, looking more secure. In a situation too where after you make that first mistake and you drop the ball in the outfield on the Ashley Morgan hit last inning, you're not gonna do it again. You're not gonna let that get you twice. And we've seen how resilient Jaden Fields is as a player. I mean, you talk about what she did at Oklahoma on Tuesday, having her home run taken away because she made the mental mistake of not stepping on home plate on the home run trot. And then to come back in extra innings and come up with a walk-off hit, it's big time right there. Shows you, you don't let things phase you, you brush it off. All right, no big deal, on to the next pitch. And Tony Baldwin said, yeah, there was never really a conversation about it. it. It was what it was, and everybody in the whole team moved on and went back to work and got the job done. Ivy Davis lifts it. Armistead calls for it and grabs it. Two down. Kiki Malloy up next, looking for her first hit today, reached on a fielder's choice in the third. Kiki Malloy kind of shows you the ebbs and flows of this season because she was last week's SEC Player of the Week with her performance against South Carolina. Only one for 10 in the series so far. She had a seven game hit streak coming into the series, but unfortunately that ended in game one. We talked to Karen Weekly though. She said, you know, if you're if you're watching somebody like a Kiki Malloy, you know you can't go to the bathroom when she's up to up to the plate if you're a fan, because she can do something big with one swing at any time. Oh yeah. She's not di dictated too much by how hot or cold she is. She can just one swing be a game changer. Comes from a family of athletes. It's in her blood. Most of her families played at Washington, but the weeklies got her to come to Rocky Top and play some softball. And you look at those numbers from 2020 to this year, and the strikeout numbers alone is really impressive. There's out number three. We're going to the seventh inning, and we have got a tie game here in Knoxville. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Nothing like a tie ball game on a Sunday afternoon. We go to the top of the seventh inning. Tennessee and Georgia nodded at eight runs apiece. Georgia had a monster inning back in the sixth. Put up, excuse me, back in the third, put up six runs and took a five run lead on Tennessee. Well, guess what? We got a tie game now. They're gonna need that lucky pickle. Georgia is going into the seventh to try to get back on top. Lacey Fincher will lead off. This Georgia team has only had one hit over the last three innings, though, after that monster third. Yeah, and if you're Georgia and you want somebody to step up that really hasn't this series yet is Lacey Fincher. She talks about her. She's the leader on this team. She's a veteran player. But she's got to come up with a, a big clutch hit, try and get something going for Georgia here in the seventh if they want to try to potentially win this game. Has two hits in the series, none of them coming today. Picked up an RBI in the third, though. Was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded.
Shagrin makes the play look easy, one away. And you look at Georgia only getting one hit in the last three innings. I think that's a testament to what Rodgers has been able to come in and do and what adjust adjustments she's made since she's re-entered the game. And that's a tough thing to do for a pitcher is to get pulled, kind of have your pride eaten out a little bit, to go back to the bullpen, work some stuff out, and then come back in and look better than you started the game. It's a quick turnaround. But Ashley Rogers has that competitive fire, and she wants to go get redemption and face the best of the best. She's done a good job re-entering this game. Facing Sarah Mosley now, and she'll sky it to Segern, two down. Well, for the 42nd straight year, the NFL Draft is on ESPN. It's also on the NFL Network, and the game day crew will be on ABC again this year, covering it from the college perspective. It all comes to you next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with all three days on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. Going back to Ashley Rogers in the circle, though, Karen Weekly feels like she went from being a great pitcher to an elite pitcher this year because they've added Megan Rhodes-Smith to work with her, and she really knows how to manage each pitcher differently, and that has helped Ashley Rogers so much. I think what Rhodes-Smith did so well with Ashley Rogers because she was already so talented, but you're taking a talented pitcher. What they really worked on was perfecting the spin and the break on her pitches. Yeah. She already had Chamley to go. She already had devastatingly good movement. But when you just crisp it up, you make sure that location is on point, you perfect the spin rate, you're gonna get a lot more swing and misses, and that shows in her strikeout to walk ratio. Tennessee's retired seven straight, and there's a big K for Ashley Rogers. Ashley Rogers getting fired up, coming back with vengeance in the circle after giving up some runs early in this ball game. Tennessee has got a chance to walk it off here in the bottom of the seven. Georgia hasn't scored since that big third inning where they played at six runs, and now Tennessee has a chance after trailing by five to walk it off in the bottom of the seventh. It will be the eight, nine, and one hitters coming up to face Mary Wilson Avant, a series sweep on the line for the Lady Vols. Tennessee is going to use a pinch hitter. It'll be Caitlin Parsons. Doesn't have a hit against Georgia this weekend. And that goes foul. Man, Armistead trying to lay out for it. What an effort by the young shortstop. Going all out to try and make this play. And it's so tough. Behind third base, well into foul territory. But you got to love the effort and the layout here. Tips off the very end of her glove. That would have been. Sports Center top 10 catch if she would have made that. A ball and a strike now to Parsons. Back at Avant, one away. Anna Fox has had some success against Mary Wilson Avant today. A couple of singles, did strike out in the fourth. But two for three on the day, and behind her, Madison Weber hitting the leadoff spot. Got a couple base hits herself. Takes the first pitch and rolls it to Kuma. A quick two outs. Six straight now, retired by Avan in this Georgia defense. Well, you love games like this to see Mary Wilson, Avant, and Ashley Rogers. Both of them just seem to be getting a little stronger as this game goes on. The last few innings for both of these pitchers were kind of what I expected to see at the beginning of this game, but we're seeing at the end. 
Top of the order, Madison Weber with two outs. Tennessee trying to avoid extras. Madison Weber hitting in that top spot in the order today for the first time this season. She has earned it with her performances. A hit in every game of this series. Already has a couple of RBI today. And Tennessee's had to play around with the top of their lineup, especially. I think Amanda Ayala was one of those players that fit so well in the leadoff spot, had a really high average, good on base percentage, but just because she's been hurt and really battling that ankle injury. Tennessee's had to try a few people in that spot, including Kaylin Hannon, Kiki Malloy. And that's an easy play for Lacey Fincher to make. Some extra innings on this Sunday afternoon on Rocky Top. Georgia Bats up next. Going to extra innings, Georgia and Tennessee knotted up at eight apiece. It will be the shortstop, Ellie Armistead, leading off this eighth inning, and she went yard back in the second. Yeah, it took a nice curveball in the outside corner of the plate, deep. Really great extension on this swing. Really the first positive, really strong hit off of Rodgers we saw from Georgia today. And she has the potential to spark something in this Georgia offense once again here in extras. Tied up at eight. Georgia is 3-0 and in extra inning games this season, including a win on Tuesday against number one, Oklahoma. Ashley Rogers has come back in the circle, re-entered in the fifth inning, has looked pretty strong, has retired the last seven Georgia hitters. Call that first pitch a ball. That was a close pitch. I mean, that's one that Rogers, without a doubt, wants. And it's something that has been a focus this season a little bit is the umpires really making sure that they control that lower half of the strike zone, that low pitch. And to me, that looks like a strike based upon what the strike zone is, based upon where the kneecaps are on the batter. I think that's a that's a K. But I like that Rogers bounces back with two straight strikes. Goes upstairs. Split pitch Armistead really has struggled with today is the rise ball. She crushed the curve, but the rise she really hasn't touched yet today. There's a really interesting conversation uh, with the seven innings crew and Christy Cornwell of the NCAA umpiring. And she talks about the strike zone and things are working on. You can check it out right now on the seven innings podcast. But really good information there regarding the strike zone and umpires this year and crewing and all the challenges they face too. It was really insightful. I think that we see the effects of COVID and uh, the strain of the last year on the players, but you don't think about it from an umpire's perspective and how they've had to basically have so many less reps. They're just not as crisp as maybe they would be otherwise. And I think what else Christy Cornwell did a really nice job of is just explaining some of the nuances that you see, some deal, some easy ways of explaining the obstruction call, the strike zone, just things that we see pretty often with calls this season that will bring some clarity, I think, to viewers and make it a lot more sense. Yeah, there's some Star Trek references in there. <laughs> so if you're interested, Seven Innings Podcast, it's a bonus episode called True Blue. You can check it out right now wherever you get your podcasts. 
This will be Jaden Fields stepping in against Ashley Rogers. Reached on an error and was hit by a pitch today. Exactly right, Courtney. Hey, that pitch looks so good, and Ashley Rogers looks so comfortable. See, she's been so much more efficient as this game has continued on, and she's re-entered. Yeah. And you gotta love and know when you're spotting it up on both sides of, of the plate like that, and Jaden Fields isn't biting, it, it tells me that you have deceptive movement, and you're kind of perplexing the batter, which is exactly what you want to do as a pitcher. You want to stay away from patterns, make it just tough for a batter to make a decision at the plate. There's so much going on in your mind in the box, but when a pitcher makes it challenging and they spot the ball up perfectly, it just adds to the pressure because you know if you make a mental mistake, it's going to be strike three looking. Ivy Davis makes the throw in time. Well, Ashley Rogers has made these Georgia batters think and she has been so good, has not allowed a hit since she has re-entered back in the fifth. Yeah, we're seeing some gutsy performances from Rogers, from Avant. And you know the two of them have it in their mind. Hey, this pitcher that I'm going up against is bringing it, so I better step up my game and bring it. And that was honestly what was so impressive about Avant's win on Tuesday against Oklahoma, is you're facing the best offense in the country. One through nine, anybody can hit it out at any second of the day. She even gave up a grand slam, but she brushed it off. No big deal. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing out there in the circle and give my offense a chance. She did. She pulled it off in extras. Yeah, and we'll have a pinch hitter here as McKenzie Puckett steps in for Georgia. But Tony Baldwin, their associate head coach, told us she got more efficient, too, after that grand slam. She got better in each inning, stayed calm, was still feeling good, and that's why they were able to keep her in. I think there's moments in this game that kind of wake you up, whether you're a pitcher, a hitter, defensively, whatever it may be, that kind of spark the level of focus that you have and that's required of you to win out, win a ball game. And we're seeing that response from both Ava and Rogers. Yeah. Strike out, Ashley Rogers. A nice top of the eighth inning for the Lady Vols. Another chance to walk it off on the other side. Bottom of the eighth inning in Knoxville, tied up at eight. Tennessee trailed by five in this game and have battled back to knot us up. Want to let you know if you're looking for UCLA Washington, that is on the ESPN app right now. UCLA leading 3-1. to one. We will get you to that game as soon as we are done here. Tennessee is hoping that happens right now. Kaylin Hannon steps up to the plate, facing Mary Wilson, Avant. Tennessee going for the series sweep of Georgia. It's such an important role here for Kaylin Hannon because she knows who's behind her right now in the lineup. It's your two hottest hitters, Ashley Morgan and Ali Shipman. Gotta get on base to give them a chance. And for Hannon, I think the best thing that she can do is have a really nice quality at bat. She can't get herself out. So that last pitch that's a ball that's a little bit elevated and a little bit inside is a great take. Can't chase pitches outside of the zone. If Avian's going to give her a free pass, she's going to take it. And the other thing I look at is that Bordeaux has not been able to throw out any Tennessee runners stealing this weekend. Kaylin Hannon 
has the potential to get a stolen base, 10 for 11 on the season. She'll take the hit instead. Out to right field, Kaylin Hannon is on exactly what Tennessee needed. And here comes Ashley Morgan. Ashley Morgan has been so hot today. Just missed a home run, hit this to the warning track. Jane Fields not, a, not able to handle it in the sun. And that was the swing right there that tied this ball game up. You know, if you're Georgia here, you, you really can't pitch around Ashley Morgan too much either because you can't push a runner into scoring position. So I think this Georgia team's gonna have a discussion about what they're gonna do with Hannon. And a pitching change. Mm. So Mary Wilson Avant removed from the circle and Georgia will insert a new pitcher. We'll introduce you to her when we come back, tied up here in the bottom of the eighth. Britton Rogers is the new pitcher in the circle for Georgia. Tennessee saw her yesterday in game two of this series. She made it through two and a third innings. This is just her ninth appearance of the season for Georgia. Britton Rogers is a really inexperienced player for this Georgia team. Doesn't have too many innings on the season. She got to start in game two, which was an interesting move by Georgia. I think that they're just in this place they're trying to mix something up, trying to find someone that can fill the gaps and fill the holes in the circle and come in and produce a couple good innings behind Avant. Well, she's going to have a tough batter to face to start off. Ashley Morgan, who has been phenomenal in this series, six for nine with six RBI. She has four RBI today and a runner on right now. First look at Rogers. Morgan, a two RBI double in the fourth, and then did it again in the fifth. It's not a bad off speed there from Rogers, just to try and mix it up. Keep Ashley Morgan guessing a little bit in the circle. You can see she did a check swing. It's not on time with that pitch. It looks good out of the hands, but saw the off speed and kind of hitched her swing. And this is a big spot for Ashley Morgan to take her time to be patient. You know, she's done so well today and she's hit the ball really well. No doubt she's hot, but this is a freshman coming in in an extra inning situation with a tie ball game, a runner aboard. Make sure she really brings it in there for a good strike. The one that you're looking for as a hitter. In foul territory, Georgia looking to make the grab at the fence, and they do. Kaylin Hannon will get back to first, one away. Ashley Morgan just sitting on this off speed a little bit. Definitely gets under it. And a nice job by Kuma to come across and make this play. It's a tough play coming up against the wall. And the fact that Kaylin Hannon isn't able to tag up and advance on this play is another huge defensive feat for the Georgia Bulldogs. Brings us to Allie Shipman with one out. Shipman had an RBI double in the first inning to get Tennessee on the board. She still has that runner over on first. Mary 
Wilson Avant lifted here in the eighth inning. Give up 10 hits, six earned runs to Tennessee, a walk and three strikeouts. You're definitely not Mary Wilson Avant's best outing, but you gotta give her credit for going the distance as long as she did. Making it almost through eight innings. And they'll get the lead runner. Allie Shipman will be safe. And this is a big mistake to me by Georgia. There's no excuse for not trying to turn this double play. Allie Rogers is not the fastest player on the team. Kuma has plenty of time to try and make a throw over to first. And the problem is, is that's not in her head before the play. That's where the mental mistake is. That should be ingrained in you to flip it. And Lou Harris Champer's trying to say, hey, you're good, it's all right. Get out there and keep working. But that was a big opportunity to get Rodgers out of the inning. Chelsea Seger, a bouncer to right field. Allie Shipman coming around to third. She will stop there. It is runners on the corners for Tennessee. Chelsea Sager, no hesitation, gets in the box, sees one that she likes. This is the pitch that's well over the middle of the plate that she just sits on and attacks, drives it to the right field corner. And it's a really good thing that Jaden Fields is able to cut this ball off and it doesn't ricochet off the wall. Because if it would, you're talking about Allie Shipman potentially being able to make it all the way from first to home. Just little things like that, preventing the walk off, making a good angle on the outfield play is a big deal. Winning run is at third for Tennessee with Ivy Davis at the plate. She has reached in three of her four at-bats, two fielder's choices and an error in the fourth. Had the grand slam yesterday in game two. Tennessee is four for 11 with runners in scoring position this afternoon. We talk about little things mattering in this game. You have a tie ball game. The hesitation here from Kuma to not turn this play or to sit back and think, oh, she's gonna be safe automatically. You just never know how fast somebody gets out of the box. And you gotta be thinking, throw that ball over to first. Because if Tennessee's able to walk it off here, that's the difference maker in this inning. And Georgia is able to get out of it. To the ninth inning we go. Tennessee leaves the winning run on third. a shaky start. Actually, Rodgers has been a difference maker in this game. and She gave up some runs early in this ball game to Georgia. Peyton Bordeaux coming up with a big hit. Allie Turner in relief didn't do as well either, but in the fourth inning, Ashley Morgan changed the game for Tennessee. They were down by five runs. She's putting some runs on the board, coming up with some big hits to try and chip away in this game. And then once again in the fifth inning, it would be Ashley Morgan coming up with a Big hit to score two runs. Quick play for Sykes, and she's on. Georgia getting aggressive. I like Savannah Sykes going with something different here to try and make something happen. Hasn't had much success today against Ashley Rogers, so goes with a little drag bunt, puts pressure on the defense. And again, another mistake by Sager over there at third base to just not get the job done. And Kuma can't lay down the bun. Instead, it pops up for out number one.
We talked about it earlier, Courtney. This game's going to come down to who's going to make the plays and who's going to execute. You've already seen two mistakes from both of these teams in this inning. Sagarin not being able to field the bunt and get the out. And then Kuma not coming up with the sacrifice, getting the ball on the ground. The pop-up's way too easy of an out. And Jada Kearney will take a big cut at the first pitch from Rogers. And Kearney struck out on her last two at-bats. Georgia has taken back the lead. Jada Kearney, who had a tough at bat in her previous at bat against Ashley Rogers, makes a huge adjustment here, has been, been throwing the rise ball pretty consistently in back-to-back -back pitches. Gets another one up and in on her hands, but it's enough over the plate and in her wheelhouse that she absolutely tattoos this ball out to the train tracks in left field. Back-to-back -back home runs, had one yesterday, has one today, and that wouldn't have been a two-run shot, but Savannah Sykes was able to get on because Segrin bobbled it to start off this inning. And Jada Kearney, we've seen throughout this entire season that she'll come up in some big moments. But they're back against the wall. She struggled a lot today. She did have a base hit earlier in today's game, but when it mattered most and she had made a mistake in her last at bat, she comes through. Actually, Morgan was trying to get it, couldn't get over there, lost it in the sun. Actually, Morgan does a good job of trying to go back and get this ball, but really this needs to be Anna Fox's at second base with the angle that Morgan's going in and trailing backwards and towards the fence. That's an easier play for Fox to be able to see coming over from second. But you can tell she just didn't have the same acceleration immediately on contact Anna Fox didn't than Ashley Morgan did. So she was late to that ball, but that's gotta be second baseman's catch. Well, it's just like the play we saw George make. It was Sydney Kuma, the second baseman, coming over there in foul territory at the fence, and she made the play. That's right. And that's reps and reaction. Anna Fox, that second base position for Tennessee has rotated through pretty pretty often this year. And she's kind of earned that. And when you're in as a defensive specialist, man, go all out and make that play. Lacey Fincher, uh-oh. Uh-oh, George is feeling it. Lacey Fincher over the fence, back-to-back -back home runs for the Georgia Bulldogs. Fincher hitting her 12th of the season, and she's another one just like Jada Kearney who hasn't had the best day at the plate, has had some ugly at-bats, but finally breaks through on this wing. Curveball, again, Georgia's owned that curveball today on the outside corner of the plate. Gets those hands to the outside corner and just does not miss any of this ball. Tell she's just relieved, the relief after that swing to get something going. Georgia has not lost a game in extra innings this season. They're 3-0, including a win in nine innings over number one Oklahoma on Tuesday. Ooh, and that hit Sarah Mosley, and she felt it. This Georgia team is so tough in extra innings. Have a lot of resiliency, as you can see, this one just kind of clip Mosley's back right knee. We've seen so many hit by pitches, but going back to this Georgia team, they're so tough in extras because they just don't have any quit in them. We've seen time and time again this season, their backs have been against the wall, they've been down, and they just find a way to scratch and claw and fight their way back. And they don't really get phased by a lot. In the last couple of innings, Rodgers has absolutely shut them down, and they come back in this inning 
after getting a little bit of a break in the previous inning. And they find a way to get three runs across the board. It's been contagious for the Georgia hitters. They had six runs put up on the scoreboard in the third inning. Here they are in the ninth with three runs scored. Six runs and ten hits over those first two games of this series. Tennessee took the win in both of those. It's been a different story today. I think the other thing that's tough about Georgia, and we talked about it earlier, Courtney, a reason that if you're a potentially a host team of a regional or super regional, you don't want Georgia coming to town, is because you just never know who's going to be hot that day. They don't have anybody that really sticks out as a, a superstar that just comes through all the time. They can hurt you in so many different ways, one through nine, because it's kind of like, whose day is it? Who's going to step up today? You know, today, late in the game, it was Jada Kearney, but we haven't really seen much from her before that. Same thing with Lacey Fincher. Yeah, just you know, so many weapons. Yeah, and Ellie Armistead's another great example. Yeah, she had the two-run shot earlier on. Armistead goes foul. Georgia wasted no time here in the top of the ninth. Savannah Sykes got on with a quick hit to start this inning. Then a batter later. Jada Kearney with a two-run homer followed by a Lacey Fincher solo home run. Big hack right there from Armistead and a really nice pitch from Rogers, just trying to get her rhythm back after giving up the two home runs. That's what makes being in the circle so tough. You're in the ninth inning, you've seen these batters only in game one of this series, but about four times each now. And there is out number three. Long balls in the ninth for Georgia. Yeah, J.D. Kearney getting it started with a little rise ball, popping it out, and then Easy Fincher taking the curve. Oppo, Georgia's up by three. Georgia back on top thanks to the long ball. They've hit three home runs in this game. Two of them came back to back in the top of the ninth, and now Tennessee trying to catch up and walk it off here in the bottom of the ninth inning and get the sweep of Georgia. You let Georgia hang around long enough, they're inevitably going to hit the long ball. Such a powerful, potent offense. and They gave just enough in the circle for Mary Wilson, Avant, and defensively to hang on and give themselves an opportunity to win this ball game here in the bottom of the ninth. It'll be the seven, eight, and nine hitters for Tennessee, starting with Kiki Malloy facing Britton Rogers. She entered the game in relief with Mary Wilson Avant back in the eighth inning. pitch right there by Rogers. I like that she's trying to bust in Kiki Malloy on the hands. A little screwball, a little tight. And that's a close call. Just a ball. Yeah. 
They'll say she did go. The ball and two strikes. Off speed sometimes is such an equalizer, and you can see Kiki Malloy. It's a close call right over there, but just casting her hands forward and her barrel forward enough to get the first base hump to call the strike. And Britton Rogers will get her first strikeout of the day. Going again with the off speed on the outside corner. A change up. It's in a great location, a little bit off the plate. Kiki Malloy definitely off balance. Definitely not on time with this pitch. It has no chance for the first out for the Bulldogs. Caitlin Parsons steps in now. First time she's seen Britton Rogers. Trailed by five runs in this game. Battle back to tie it, to send it to extra innings, but back-to-back -back home runs in the top of this inning put Georgia ahead. Strike two. It's a nice look again. The Rogers off speed is going to be what's going to be the difference maker in this inning. She's able to throw for a strike. Tennessee's got to know it's coming. How about Britton Rogers? Back-to-back -back strikeouts, and Tennessee's down to its final out. Get a three-run lead, and you come in, and you throw some filthy off-speed pitches, keeping this Tennessee team off balance, getting Malloy first, and now Parsons for the first two out of the inning. It's just stepping up right there. And again, that's what George is looking for, somebody to come in, be able to throw a few innings, and get the job done at least one time through the lineup, or enough to close out a game like this. Anna Fox, the last hope for Tennessee. Tennessee took games one and games two against Georgia. We're looking for the sweep today, but down to that final out. Sykes makes the grab, and Georgia avoids the sweep. Georgia has so much resiliency, so much grit, and the offense that they were able to put up against Rodgers was the difference maker in this game. Some really solid performances all around. Gritty in the circle and enough to get one victory in this series. So Georgia takes game three, 11 to eight. Let's get you to UCLA and Washington. This game already in progress with Beth Mullins and Michelle Smith.